James William Fulbright was born in 1905 as the fourth of six children raised by J. William and Roberta Fulbright in Fayetteville, Arkansas. His father was a farmer turned real estate investor and successful entrepreneur. Consequently, Bill Fulbright grew up in one of the wealthiest and most influential families of Fayetteville. He studied history at the University of Arkansas, where he was president of the student body and a football star, and graduated in 1924. His leadership profile, athletic ability, and family social standing made him an attractive candidate for a Rhodes Scholarship. Starting in fall 1925, he studied political science and history at Oxford University for three years, an experience that transformed his worldview. In summer 1928, Fulbright settled in Vienna for six months, where he spent an increasing amount of time at the Café Louvre, the coffee house and hangout of American journalists and European correspondents. These Viennese contacts and travel in Central and Southeastern Europe provided him with what his biographer Randall Woods has called his introduction to the real world of international politics. Fulbright returned to the United States in 1929, moved to Washington, D.C., married, studied law, worked in and out of government, and then returned to Arkansas to manage family businesses and lecture at the University of Arkansas Law School. In 1939, at the age of 34, he was named president of the University of Arkansas, an appointment that testified to the political clout of his family and ultimately began his career in politics. In 1942, he ran successfully for the House of Representatives and was off to Washington, where he gained national attention in 1943 by authoring the so-called Fulbright Resolution, favoring the participation of the United States in what was to become the United Nations. In 1944, he ran successfully for the U.S. Senate, where he was to distinguish himself as the longest-serving chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee. Fulbright immediately recognized the implications of the advent of the nuclear age for international politics. Eight weeks after Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Fulbright announced his intention to introduce a bill to promote goodwill through the exchange of students. The Fulbright Act was based on a simple but ingenious idea, amending a piece of legislation that had nothing to do with educational exchange, the Surplus Property Act of 1944. President Truman signed Fulbright's amendment into law on August 1, 1946. After World War II, the U.S. government had mountains of wartime material stockpiled overseas, food, medicine, fuel, vehicles, equipment. First of all, the Fulbright Act allowed the U.S. government to accept foreign currencies, such as Austrian shillings, to liquidate these surplus assets. Second, it proposed that the United States conclude executive agreements with foreign governments establishing binational commissions conceived to jointly decide on how to use these substantial monies, thus making foreign governments equal partners in the Fulbright program. Third, it earmarked funds for bilateral exchanges. A, for financing studies, research, instruction, and other educational activities of or for American citizens in schools and institutions of higher learning abroad, and B, for furnishing transportation for citizens of such foreign countries who desire to attend American schools and institutions of higher learning. The Fulbright Act established the original structure of the program, travel and maintenance grants for American students and scholars coming to Austria, and travel grants for Austrian students and scholars going to the United States. Finally, the Fulbright Act authorized the president to establish an independent board of foreign scholarships to oversee the exchange program that was to bear the senator's name. The U.S. Educational Commission held its first meeting in Vienna on October 6, 1950 to plan exchanges for the 51-52 academic year with an operative budget equivalent to $250,000. This phenomenal amount of money at the time, 6.5 million Austrian shillings, allowed a small country to initiate a large exchange program that brought 64 American Fulbrighters to Austria and sent 140 Austrian Fulbrighters to the United States in its first year. Until the mid-60s, Fulbright travel grants for Austrian students were managed parallel to the placement of Austrian students at American colleges and universities a task handled by the Exchange Activities Branch of the U.S. Embassy in Vienna, which, in turn, worked hand-in-hand -hand with the Institute of International Education in New York City. 
The Institute placed Austrian students at colleges and universities all over the United States, negotiated the all-important tuition waivers for them, and solicited the support of American civil society, clubs, associations, fraternities, and sororities, and foundations to subsidize their living costs, too. The travel grants were worth a small fortune, and American institutions and organizations effectively covered almost all the other costs associated with being a Fulbrighter in the good old days. And costs have changed dramatically since then. By the early 60s, the initial wartime surplus funding for the Fulbright program had been depleted. The Fulbright-Hayes Act was conceived to secure funding for the program as a line item in the federal budget in the future. It also concisely formulated the mandate of the program to increase mutual understanding between the people of the United States and the people of other countries. The act also invited foreign governments to share costs of the program in the future. In the early 60s, the United States was in the process of turning the substantial funds associated with the European Recovery Program in Austria, better known as the Marshall Plan, over to the Austrian government. In an exchange of diplomatic notes, the U.S. government proposed that the Austrian government dedicate 60 million shillings of the so-called counterpart funds it was to receive as its contribution toward the Fulbright program in the future, and to earmark 7.5 million shillings thereof for the establishment of American studies at Austrian universities. The Austrian government gladly agreed to do so. In 1963, Austria was the first country in the world to conclude a new binational Fulbright agreement with the United States, and the configuration of the Austrian-American Educational Commission was unique. It was funded by the Austrian government with counterpart funds from the Marshall Plan, and by the U.S. government with an annual contribution from the federal budget, and equipped with a mandate to institutionalize American studies at Austrian universities. After the Marshall Plan funds were depleted in the mid-80s, the Austrian government also started making direct annual contributions to the program. And so was it not only on the paper, and between a state program, but also from the financing. Since the mid-80s, the Austrian government has provided increasing levels of support for all kinds of awards for Austrian and American grantees. At the same time, pressure on the discretionary funding in the U.S. federal budget has produced a combination of cuts or flat funding for programs like Fulbright. As a result, many of the countries with binational commissions now match or, like Austria, surpass the level of U.S. support for the program. In the past 20 years, Fulbright Austria also has established a wide-ranging network of new institutional partners on both sides of the Atlantic that are instrumental in sponsoring awards for students and scholars, universities, research centers, museums, foundations. Our grant programs really depend upon the dedicated support of these fine partners. Costs have risen incessantly over the years, and Fulbright Austria has been forced to work in an increasingly tough environment. Therefore, in closing, I want to appeal to you, the alumni, friends, and associates of the Austrian-American Fulbright Program, for your support. Help us tell the Fulbright story Advocate with your representatives in Congress for its funding. Donate to the program to help sustain it so that a new generation of Fulbrighters will have the same type of opportunity in the future like you had in the past. <laughs>